Welcome to NASM CPT exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Which of the following is not required as a minimum to reduce additional risks in a fitness facility setting? A. Staffing and supervision. B. Adequate lighting. C. Clean water or drinking supply. D. Member training for use of equipment. The answer is D. Member training for use of equipment. Explanation. Clean drinking water, adequate lighting, adequate staffing and supervision, and non-slip surfaces are among the many steps a facility must take to minimize risk. Caution signs must be posted near machines, but the facility does not need to provide training to each new member. Many facilities offer new member orientation classes, but these are considered far above the minimum requirements. Number 2. Which is the only type of stretching that does not need to follow the warm-up component of an exercise program? A. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, PNF. B. Static stretching. C. Passive stretching. D. Dynamic stretching. The answer is D. Dynamic stretching. Explanation. Dynamic stretching is appropriate for use during and as a form of warm-up because it involves the movement of body parts through their full range of motion by gradually increasing intensity. PNF, static, and passive stretching are only appropriate after a thorough warm-up of at least 5 to 10 minutes of light to moderate multi-joint, large muscle group movements. PNF should also only be performed by certified fitness professionals if they have been properly educated on the technique. Number 3. When performing self-myofascial release SMR, the client must locate the adhesion and sustain pressure on that spot for a minimum of how long? A. 20 to 30 seconds. B. 30 to 45 seconds. C. 45 to 60 seconds. D. 60 seconds. The answer is A. 20 to 30 seconds. Explanation. SMR, a form of flexibility training, is properly applied when the client uses a foam roller or the stick to find a tender spot on his or her own body and then applies pressure to that area until the elastic collagenous fibers are unbundled and relief is felt. To do this effectively, pressure must be applied to the adhesion for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. Number 4. All of the following are reasons that a personal trainer should never recommend supplements to a client except A. That supplements are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration FDA. B. That underlying and or unknown medical conditions may be exacerbated by supplement use. C. That a trainer should always review a client's 3-day food log before recommending nutrient supplementation. D. That supplement manufacturing companies usually do not carry insurance, leaving the personal trainer 100% liable for monetary compensation, should either be sued. The answer is C. That a trainer should always review a client's 3-day food log before recommending nutrient supplementation. Explanation. A personal trainer should never recommend supplements to a client. Any nutritional advice beyond the scope of practice of a personal trainer should be referred to a licensed nutritionist. Supplements are not regulated by the FDA, and supplement manufacturing companies usually do not carry insurance, leaving the trainer liable to any implications of supplement recommendation or misuse. Additionally, underlying medical conditions such as heart disease or diabetes can be worsened by supplement use. Use in these cases could lead to severe injury or death. Number 5. After a particularly difficult exercise, you look your client in the eye, acknowledge the effort he put into the work, and compliment his form. What training tactic are you communicating? A. Positive reinforcement. B. Stimulus control. C. Shaping. D. Behavior chains. The answer is A. Positive reinforcement. Explanation. Positive reinforcement is communicated using verbal, praise, and nonverbal, eye contact and empathy, cues that create a positive experience for the client. Stimulus control and shaping are also operant conditioning tools. Shaping is the process of gradually increasing the demands of a skill the client already has to help him or her achieve a desired behavior. 
Stimulus control refers to the altering of the cause of an action to change the outcome of the situation. Behavior chains are series of responses to stimuli that can either lead to or avoid desired behaviors. Number 6. You are working with a new client and you have asked her to write down her weight loss goals using the SMART guidelines. Which is an example of a SMART goal? A. To lose 20 pounds in the next 30 days by increasing participation in cardio exercise and playing sports with friends. B. To lose 10 pounds over the next two months by performing 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity three times a week and weight training one time a week so that she can prepare to try out for the local soccer team. C. To lose 10 pounds so that the client may purchase the new swimsuit. D. To lose weight by increasing cardiovascular activity to three times week and lifting weights two times a week. The answer is B. To lose 10 pounds over the next two months by performing 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity three times a week and weight training one time a week so that she can prepare to try out for the local soccer team. Explanation. A SMART goal must be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Choice A is not attainable as it is unrealistic to expect to lose 20 pounds in one month of training. Choice C is nonspecific and is not measurable. Choice D is specific but not measurable. Number 7. Which form is considered an agreement between the client and personal trainer and works in conjunction with the informed consent? A. Release of liability. B. Physical Activity Readiness Questionnaire PARQ. C. Medical History Form D. Self-Assessment The answer is A. Release of Liability Explanation The release of liability is an added level of liability protection and is an agreement between the client and trainer and their facility that the participant relinquishes his or her rights to collect damages in the case of injury. Both the PARQ and medical history forms are used as screening tools, and a self-assessment quiz is used to help clients understand their own levels of wellness. Number 8. How many positive risk factors must a client have to be considered a moderate risk? A. 0. B. 1. C. 2. D. Any known cardiovascular, pulmonary, or metabolic disease. The answer is C. 2. Explanation. Individuals who have two or more risk factors are considered to be a moderate risk. Clients with zero or one risk factor are considered low risk, and any client with a known cardiovascular, pulmonary, or metabolic disease is automatically high risk. Number 9. What key coping strategy is most important for relapse prevention? A. Assertiveness. B. Self-regulation. C. Intrinsic motivation. D. Social support. The answer is D. Social support. Explanation. Social support has been shown to be a key element in program adherence and is an important coping strategy in preventing relapse. Individuals with a strong support network and whose family and friends are involved in their program have greater success than those who do not. Assertiveness is the straightforward and honest expression of thoughts. Self-regulation is a client's ability to control his or her own behaviors, schedules, priorities, and so on. Intrinsic motivation is not a coping strategy, but is the internal motivation of a person to adhere to the program for the sake of personal satisfaction, and not because of the positive response of an external stimuli. Number 10. You meet a client who has been exercising on her own for the past three months. She has a plan of action and a steady routine at the local gym. Which stage of change is this client in, per the transtheoretical model? A. Contemplation. B. Action. C. Preparation. D. Maintenance. The answer is B. Action. Explanation. This client is at the action stage of change. During the action stage, a person has a plan of action and is actively making behavior changes, however, he or she has been doing so for less than six months. The contemplation stage is during the time when a client is thinking about change and plans to do so in the future, within six months. During the preparation stage, the client has decided on a plan of action 
and will be beginning changes in behavior within the next 30 days. A client has reached the maintenance stage when he or she has been participating in behavior change for at least six months. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.